Hey, it's Mike with Real Texas Outdoors. I uh, wanted to make a little update video here. Uh, this is the four leaf clover or guide secret trap. And I was building these today and I realized that it has been a long time since I've actually put these up on our site. And the pictures and the video and all that was kind of outdated. So I wanted to show you guys this trap again. Uh, I will leave the link, you know, as far as using the trap in the description here. Um, are on the page here and so you will be able to see how the trap actually works and use in action but I wanted to show you the trap up close and make a new video of that just because the other one was just kind of outdated and old and we've actually made a few adjustments to the design I want to share with you guys as well and so this is the figure eight trap and just kind of a backstory this was actually this design although very simple uh, was was shown to me by probably about a 94 year old man uh, my wife's uncle is a fishing guide on Sam Rayburn in Toledo and his dad uh, before he passed away he got down on the floor and actually showed me this design he was asking me about my traps that i sell here on the site and uh, he told me that those were no good and that this one would be much much better and then uh, before he left he actually walked out of the house and came back in and told me you know after he showed me the design he said and if you don't build it or if you build it and you don't catch anything is you're not doing it right and so to this day i still find that to be very very true uh, although this is a simple very simplistic looking trap it is it's really an amazing trap it works excellent and in all honesty we don't sell very many of these on the site and well in comparison to the uh the four leaf clover and i think the reason is just because they don't look like much but uh my personal trap is is one of these that i use and so i i definitely believe in it i know it works and so i did want to show you this this video and hopefully encourage you guys who are on the fence that you know whether you choose the four leaf clover or this one you're going to do great with it um this may honestly be one of my personal favorites um, but again, you know, it is it is kind of what you want to do with it. So anyway, you know, I guess the disadvantage of this one The only disadvantage is that um, You don't have that bait compartment in the center like you do in the four-leaf clover But we'll talk about how to how to negate that in just a second, but um, just a quick update on the design You know the trap itself is still a foot across this way and I do apologize I need a cameraman or I need to get a stand so I can show these a little better um, but it is a foot across this way and it is still a two foot by two foot trap. Let me get out of the way here. So you got two foot this way, two foot this way. So it's still two foot by two foot by one foot. Uh, in actuality, it's like 11 and a half inches or so, but we just call it a foot. Um, and then as far as the entry points on the trap, you can see there each side, I don't know if you can see it very well in here, each side has two entry points. And so there's actually four openings in this trap, just like the four leaf clover. And you notice the first thing that they're offset. So a fish isn't going to swim in on one side and swim right back off the other side unless he's extremely lucky. Now with any trap, you are going to lose some bait, especially if you pick the trap up and throw it back in the water. Some fish will figure out how to get out. However, if you notice on this one, we've added these little and these little tabs we push in on the middle. So these little points come out and it hopefully it, the goal there is to prevent fish from easily finding their way back out as they round these corners. And so far, I think it's worked great. So that's kind of a new addition we've done. On my personal trap, I don't have those. And you will lose a few fish, but this is a better design. Now, the other thing we changed on this design was how you get the bait out of the trap. And so we have moved where the door is. It used to be over here on the side on our old traps, probably in the pictures. Uh, it's still over here on the side. We moved it to the middle of the trap. And what that allows you to do is to really just pour the bait out a lot easier. Uh, for whatever reason, having it on the side, the door itself was hard to maneuver because of these overlapping, like where the trap uh, mesh overlaps. And so it was really difficult. I just didn't like it. And so I moved it into the middle here. And so, you know, you can flip this trap over, over and the, the door now is about five or six inches wide. So it's a real wide door. And you just flip the trap over and all the bait will fall to one side very easily because there's really nothing blocking them in the middle. And so all the bait falls to one side and then you can just shake it around and jostle the bait out very easily. And so we've just kind of made it easier to use in that aspect. Now to uh, talk about the uh, the bait issue about how you bait your trap. Um, honestly, my uncle or my wife's uncle, the fishing guy, doesn't use any bait at all and does great in these. Uh, however, a lot of people like to put dog food or bread. Now, if you throw that in this trap, obviously it will come out of the trap and you will lose it. And so that's not that's not a good thing to happen. So. You know, one thing you might do to prevent that from happening is to, to put your bait in, like, you know, if you're using bread, put it in an old sock or some old pantyhose and then tie it to the bottom of the trap. If you put bread in one of these traps, in any trap really, and you don't um, have it, you know, in a secure spot like our figure eight, the bread's going to float to the top and the fish can get your bait out of the trap without actually going in it. So you don't want to do that either. And so if you use this and you want to bait it, you definitely want to figure out a way, you know, pantyhose or a sock works well to get, keep the bait on the bottom of the trap. You can tie down you know pretty much anything on the bottom and it will serve as bait now personally i use and over here you'll see one of my old traps i use uh, this is the old version of figure eight 
um, that spray foam. So you can see in there we have this spray foam that's called the Great Stuff, I believe it's called. And you can pick that up at like Lowe's or any like hardware store. And I have sprayed that in the bottom of this and in one spot there. And so the goal there is to have the fish actually go in the trap to get to it. Now this actually works really, really well. It works probably as good as bread or dog food. Um, the fish will go in there and the great thing about the spray foam is that you don't have to keep baiting it up and it will not mess up your you know get i guess one of my biggest complaints i have a bass tracker with carpet and when i would take the bread and dog food out of the traps it would get all over the boat and make a mess this does not do that so and this thing you can can you basically keep it continuously baited and catch fish over and over and over and so definitely try that if you haven't done it it's called the great stuff or any that expandable foam works very well you just spray it in there and you should be good to go and so that's pretty much it there's the new updated version of the figure eight or the guide secret um, if you have any questions about it feel free to go to our site it's real texas outdoors but it's spelled r-e-e-l uh, dot com and uh, feel free to go to the bottom of the site there we do have a link where you can contact us on facebook or send us an email uh, you can always call us i'll be glad to uh to answer any questions you have thank you guys for watching hope you have a blessed day